<laughs> oh, cute story time. You did a cute one? All right. Feed is going in. We're live. Are we? Well, that's we are fun. live and in person, baby. Got anybody else out in the wings no, or just us? Messy, no. Just us. Just us. Okay. This is chickens. Well, I'm just taping in a window here. Putting in the, what do you call these, mullions or something? Mullions? What do you call the, the, the little lines in the window? The little separation lines. Window panes? No, those are the, that's the glass in between. I thought these were called mullions. Mullions? Mullions. Have to Could be wrong. I just thought that's what they were. Well, we'll call them that for now. Hey, we can call them whatever we want. Yeah, that's true. I'd like to know the real name, though, wouldn't you? Kind of. Aren't you curious? Acquiring minds and all that. Oh, inquiring minds want to know. Always something with you. Always something. Let's go ask Bing. Bing knows everything. Ask, ask the AI. So what? Cinnamon tells me her husband has a personal AI that's on his computer that's just does his thing. Have you heard about that? For what? On who? John says that Cinnamon's husband has a personal AI that um, is on his computer. John, we just started, and I'm going to have to um, uh, dry pretty quick, but that's all right. Hmm. Okay. What little sign here in the window. For... She said she thought you'd know about it because you keep up with all that stuff. And I said, I don't know if you know about it because I didn't know about it. But those are called munions. Munions. M-U-N-T-I-N-S. It refers to the strip of wood or metal that separates and holds panes of glass in a window. Well, I, I didn't have the right wording on it, did I? Well, no, you didn't. You called them munions. Munions, I called them. They're mun. M-U-N. Munions? Muntins. Munions, right? Muntins. Munions. Mun mun I think muntins. Ask her how to say it. Oh, man. So I think it's mullions. Why would it be an O when there's a U? Well, I, mullions, M-U-L-L-I-O-N-S or something? No, you say it's M-U-N-T-I-N-S. Are you listening to me at all? I am, but that doesn't seem I'm right. I'm not supposed to be talking myself over here. <laughs> it doesn't seem right. I was talking to the stuffy staff. They uh, listen to me. Uh, that just doesn't seem right, darling. It says it right here. It says, it, it, it says the exact words what you said. Okay, so how do you pronounce it? Okay, did they tell you how to pronounce it? Yes. Montan. 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 How many times are you going to say it, bro? Sounds like mountain. mountain. He did it for 15 seconds. There you go, Montan. Huh. Well, our day's not been wasted. No kidding. Nope. Oh, I have a question. Why is the gas pump on the deck and not the ground? Because that's how it was built in the olden days. Like, Michelle, why do you ask silly questions? Look, it's my painting, but, you know, I swear <laughs> you I have it. You want to put it on the ground, you put that's it on the ground. That's how I designed it. I looked up a bunch of old pictures, and this is what I came up with. So there. If you realize that you're in the um, bayou, because that's where we are, and there's a lot of water, which you're going to see shortly, or probably and an hour. Everything floods. The floodplain, they thought it would be wiser to have it up high so they could fill up the boats as they come by. Or something like that. I'd go for that. Well, we know Munden now. But boy, I sure thought they said it differently. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you're saying. I, I thought you it was crazy. called it Mullions. And, no, you know, no Mullions. Sure this... well, it just looks know, weird. Yeah, I find I've that... seen old pumps like that, though, but it does look weird, but it's not. You gotta get out more, sweetie. That's all there is to it. When the rest of the painting gets done, it will make sense. 
the rest of the painting is not done yet, so it doesn't make sense. But I meant to get that one in yesterday and didn't. So we're continuing on. So where we last where we left off yesterday, besides on the painting, we also left off on um, on you know the, the selling cars and buying cars and all that stuff, right? We did. We left off all that stuff. And one of the things so there's other stuff that, you know, kind of came up when I was doing that. They're kind of interesting. Okay, so... Um, I, was thinking, I was thinking about that this morning. John and I were, we, um, you know, so stopped off at the eye doctor's place today and um, John and I were talking about that. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit here. Where's my... What are we talking about? Uh, cars and you know my experience with selling cars and some of the stuff I was oh, talking yeah. about I was going to share today. Do you remember what any of that was? Mm. Just offhand? Mm. You know you were talking to me before this brain is fully functional. Well I know. I know, and I, I apologize about that. But this is cruelty to animals. We had to get up very early for my eye doctor appointment today, and the only one we could get before Christmas was at 10.15. It was like 30 minutes away. So. Well, really before New Year's. So we had to get up very early and spent... The crack like, of dawn. I mean, the sun was just coming up. And it was like um, like 8 o'clock even, you know. So. Yeah. And then, uh, and then they were kind of... Well, kind of, they were kind of, we spent two hours there, right? Between yeah. being shuffled from one room to another. <laughs> yeah. It seemed longer than I think it should have been. Yeah. Myself. Yeah. Okay. So that was, a, you know, sort of an adventure in itself. Got the day rolling. Got the day rolling. That's what we did, right? We got the day rolling. And uh, I need a little contrast here between this thing and that. Uh, let's see. I don't I have a light yellow. I do. I have a yellow. Yes, you do. Yellow pen here like this. Sometimes it's just these, I tell you what, I love having all the different colors. Posca pens make a lot of different colors, but they're not colors I ever wanted to use. I finally ended up giving um, them to my granddaughter to use to paint on shoes or something, because they were just not colors I'd want to use in a painting. They were never designed for that anyway, even though they're acrylic paint. Where these Artisto pens have a lot more subtle colors. Now, when you look for the Atristo pins, we're going to be adding them to the store. You got to make, they make hundreds, hundreds of them. They make water base, they make acrylic, the watercolor, acrylic, oil, all kinds. And we are using the acrylic ones. You got to make sure you get the acrylic ones, or you're going to be barking up the wrong tree. Oh, exactly. And where did that come from? Barking up the wrong tree. I guess dogs used to bark well, up the oh wrong no, tree. Oh no, because they were hunters and they would bark. Um, they would say that um, somebody was up there and there so, really wasn't. Well, they were, you know, they were looking for whatever they had treed. So uh, I think the expression probably comes from dogs that were. Um, 
barking up the wrong tree because there was nobody up there. Yeah, kind of, yeah, like that, right? Yeah. I think, I think so. Okay. See, our newest ones we got have got the clear body, which really makes it handy so you can see what's in there. See, like this, like this. See how they have the clear body as opposed to the ones before? So you can see what's the in there. The black body. Yeah. I like the new ones. Well, you know, everything's new and improved, okay? Uh, for sure, right? Everything. Always. Well, you know what I need to do? I need to go to Amazon and see what we bought and back into it that way. Well, we could do that, too. You can. I got the One power. One thing about it is if you, want, if you want a scary afternoon, there's a way when you're looking at your Amazon purchases to see what you spent last year. <laughs> Don't do that. Step it's away from the people. Pro probably want to give that a rethink. Well, a, that's interesting. They don't show a clear body, but that's what we got. Yeah. Interesting, huh? So I wonder if that's a change. You may, may or may not get a clear body. Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know, but I liked it. Well, they we may not have it. updated their photograph either. Might I mean, not have, might not I have. Just might have had it, but didn't want to upgrade the photograph. Because, you know. Yeah, we will throw these in the old store so you guys can find them. At least the ones we're using. Like I said, they make tons of them. That's them. Uh, we got the 60 count. They make a 30 count, 42, and a 60. And being the queen of color, she wanted all the colors. Want all the colors, man? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Wouldn't you want all the colors? Why? Give me yes. all the colors. Want all the colors? Absolutely, all the colors. So. Uh, Where's my window there? Here, if you guys are looking for them, that right there is the. That's our affiliate link, so we'll make two cents if you buy them through us, which we appreciate you doing. But that's yeah. uh, that's the exact ones that we're using right now. Like I said, I will be adding that to our store now that I found the right ones. Okay. And if you, when you're sitting there just looking at, if you look at our store list, those are things you can add to the store while you're just. Um, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. I got editing to do. Okay. <sighs> just saying. As long as I thought you could delegate that to one of the stuffy staff people. Well, apparently they're not doing it, so I just oh, decided man. to throw. I thrown it back in your court. You know. I had to talk to that crew. They are snoozers. My page. Art items. And I gotta spend time in the store and clean it all up and get it organized again. Still, there's not enough hours in the day. Okay. Gonna dry this. I'll just dry everything real quick. One of the um, things that I would suggest when if anybody's thinking about uh, buying a car or when you go buy your next car, what I'm going to suggest is that you um, uh, uh, don't go on a, a Saturday. If you're just looking, if you're just looking, don't don't go on a Saturday, okay? If you're just kicking and the tire reason is is that because the salesmen that's where they make their money. So if you have a friend that you know sells cars or something, and they said, "Come see me," do it during the week when nothing else is going on. They have what they call slow days, and um, that's that's when you wanna um, that's when you wanna. Um, do that kind of thing, okay? You definitely don't want to um, be um, uh, bothering somebody on, on on a day when they when they actually they can't spend a lot of time with you. And if you're serious about wanting to buy a car, 
and you don't want to get the bums rushed, don't buy it on a weekend either if you can. It's the last day of the month you're going to have to, but check out and do all the shopping ahead of time, okay? And um, I say that because it's very easy for... Um, um, Uh, people to just, you know, well, you have a weekend free, I'll just go, you know, waste somebody else's time. I'm not going to buy anything. And again, they, if, the, if, the, if the store is full of um, um, uh, customers and, you know, and everybody gets an up and you, you come in and maybe your, your person is working with somebody and they have to stop and, and talk to you and, they, you know, then that's a problem. Okay. Um, you want to just try to avoid av avoid avoid that. And you can by um, um, just you know keeping it to a weekday. Okay, just keep it to a weekday. And that's that's what I would tell you. Is a certain day better than another? Well, um, yeah. Just you know, like like the midweek. Probably nobody comes in on a Wednesday, or you know, what I mean, just. That's not, not, you Thursday. know, sometimes they're finishing up car sales, but I would say that keep it. Um, don't come in at lunchtime. You know, everybody else, if they are going to come in, are going to come in at lunchtime. Okay. They're going to try and come in at lunchtime too. So you want you want to kind of avoid doing that. And. Um, Uh, again, if you can, talk to your bank before you come in and see what kind of financing you, or your credit union, see what kind of um, financing you can. Now, if you finance a car through your credit union, uh, something uh, uh, credit unions often, it doesn't show up on your um, credit report. So if you, for instance, if you were wanting to buy a house, for instance, and they see you just bought a car. Sometimes it's have to get a loan or something. It's hard to, it's hard to get that. But if you, um, if you, um, you know, go to a credit union, a lot of credit unions will not, you know, they don't report it to like TRW and Trans Trans Union and stuff like that. They just don't, they just don't report it. Okay. So that in itself is sort of interesting, right? Um, this is interesting painting on this absorbent ground. So those were so, probably some some pretty big ones that I would I would look at when you're um, you know when you're thinking about purchasing a car. And then the other thing I would tell you. And people don't consider that is uh, insurance. Check with your insurance agency because even cheap cars, some cheap cars could cost more to insure than an expensive one because if they get in an accident, the whole body panel has to be replaced, not just a fender. Okay. Also, the newer safety features. And the newer safety features. So, and there may be discounts on the safety. If you buy a car with the newer safety features, you may be up for discount. Okay. And if you're, you know, helping, I mean, say, one of your kids or somebody in the family, and they want a, a car that's a four-wheel drive, right? All these new uh, Those, those, if you have a four-wheel drive, they don't care if you ever took it to the beach. They think you're going <coughs> to. I'm pretty sure if you bought it, you might go down to the sand. And so you're going to um, salt water and everything, and they're going to, they're going to rate that car for you. Accordingly. Like you were going to do that doesn't matter whether you did ever did. Okay, they're going to figure that um, <coughs> you did, and you're going to your insurance rates are going to be higher. <coughs> you have to have car insurance before they let you leave. So chances are, if you don't have good insurance, they'll try to sell you some, right, John? Absolutely. They'll have a friend or somebody that they've made a you know wonderful deal with, and. Um, they will want to sell you <coughs> car insurance. I just want you know, and you can't blame them because you can't leave. 
the dealership with the car if you don't have it, okay? Make sense? So, of course, they're going to want to sell it to you rather than have you walk off and say, well, so make sure that your insurance is up to date. Make sure all your ducks are in the row. Yeah, that's absolutely. You want all of that to be... Um, you want all of that um, in place before you go, okay? Did all this. And I was surprised that some cars are really not very insurable. I mean they just the insurance is too much, even though they're 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 not an expensive car. That for some reason they're um they're gonna cost people more than um another kind of car, right? Exactly. I mean, that those are just little things that were surprising to me when when we when we were doing it, you know. Um, if you go and buy a car in the, another state, check what the rules are about having to get a license plate for it before you um, before you leave. Okay. You want to you want to check on all of that because I remember years ago, uh, before Cinnamon was born. In fact, it was the first year I'd just gotten married to her dad, and we had driven across country on our motorcycles, and we had a, an air steam travel trailer that uh, a friend of ours that, that we knew was out driving, and he crashed. It was a brand new car. I got it as a wedding present, and uh, it's funny. We were on our motorcycles. There were six of us. And we were camping out and just um, um, traveling across country from Aspen to California. And we were in the desert of, uh, 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 you know, in uh, Nevada. And we were up on a rise and we could see the, our car. Um, we could see that over the hill. It's just kind of a faint thing. We could see it. And we watched it. Um, we didn't have the proper towing thing on it. We just had a tow bar. We didn't have a uh, one that non-sway tow bar. That was sort of new technology, and we didn't have any of that. And um, uh, we could we watched our car just um, wreck, get in a wreck all by itself. It just got in a wreck, and that that he was going too fast, and the and the trailer, uh, the airstream trailer, started to just jackknife and flip the whole car over and total the car. Okay. And uh, he was okay, but um, our car wasn't. And so we we were in we were in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we had to buy a car. So um, we um, I remember calling my dad. And he said, "We'll go get another car. The insurance will cover it. And whatever it doesn't, we'll pick up the tab, right?" So we had gone to the we had a Plymouth Bear. Plymouth Barracuda is what we had. I wanted a Ford Mustang, but the Mustang store was closed on uh, the day my dad could go shopping for us. So we, I got this, didn't even like this car, but got this Plymouth Barracuda instead. So anyway, the uh, um, uh, so when we went car shopping, uh, of course, we didn't know anything about cars. I was 18 at the time. Colby was 27, and you know the only thing he'd ever bought was a truck. We didn't know. We didn't know people would do weird things or try to cheat us or anything. We had no idea about any of that. But we, we, he felt Colby wanted this, plum, this um, Dodge Charger, and they had one that was that was set up for racing, somehow, and it was a fast engine. And he he was all excited about the. You know, the, the sec he kept talking about the secondaries not coming on, and he had all this funny weird stuff he would say about, you know, wanting this car, and why we wanted it. And so, um, 
when we went to pick up the car, um, they had taken it out the night before and had been in a wreck. It, that somebody had raced it, even though we had, and it was a big scandal thing with the dealership. And we ended up getting a, a Dodge Charger, and um, wasn't exactly the one Kobe wanted, but you know it was like you know anyway he wanted this other one which we shouldn't have had anyway. We were, we had a lucky escape as far as I'm concerned from that other car, but um, anyway. <coughs> We just, um, we, we, if we got taken advantage of, we had no way of knowing, you see, because we didn't know enough about buying stuff like that. Does this make sense? We just didn't know. And um, so, you know, do a little homework. You know, don't just uh, rely on, um, uh, you know, something you read in a magazine that this is a good car, you should have it. Um, do a little do a little homework about the dealership you go to. Some certain dealerships are much more honorable than others. Um, Cinnamon and John recently uh, bought a used car from the uh, Ford dealer right next to us, and um, you'll have to ask them about it. But um, they um, they're out twenty thousand dollars on a used car that doesn't run. And they're still trying to figure out what to do about that. And plus, it didn't. The, the my, you know, when they went to tr to try to trade it, because it, to, you know, they found out from another dealer that the that the um, that the mileage had been turned back on the car. And um, something a little screwy about the title. So anyway, he, um, they're still dealing with that fiasco. And um, like I say, it's. And her husband knows a ton of, about cars, and he took the car into one of his friends who was a mechanic, and they didn't catch the problem. Okay? So, you just, you don't know. And uh, that's why I say it's better to, um, um, let's see, I'm just thinking about doing this and talking to you at the same time, is... Don't buy in haste. Um, that would be the one thing. It's, in. Um, it's never a good idea to give anybody a car for Christmas that they then surprise them with it. You know, particularly somebody that it's just probably not a good plan. Okay. Um, Uh, just it just isn't okay. I had this friend that, uh, and I, she I admired her. She we she was older than me, and she looked up. You know, have you ever met anybody and they just look they have, like they have the perfect life? You ever met anybody like that? And you look at them and they think, man, they their life is just perfect. Whatever's going on with them, and to me it looked like she had the perfect life, and she had this beautiful home there in Cal Southern California. She, I, I knew her from horseback riding, and she had um, she had horses, and she had a horse, and and she had a, a beautiful home, and it just seemed like, uh, well, without you know sounding kind of funny, she just had everything going for her, you know, and uh, I, she just did, and I so admired her um, uh her house and her house. So apparently, her and they had they had they weren't real rich, but they had some pretty good money. I don't remember what he did, but they had they had they had eating out for dinner every night money. How's that? <laughs> just you know, it just depends on where you are in the food chain, what you you think is good money, doesn't it? But um, um, they definitely had um, e e eating out money for sure, right? And so anyway, he, he bought her, he bought her this, um, this brand new Porsche for, um, Christmas had a big bow on it and took it into the, and showed, you know, and had it uh, in the garage with a big bow and everything. And he was so excited to give her this gift. And she wanted him to return that car. She was so mad. 
she had horses, horses, she had a horse and a trailer, and she wanted something like a tr pickup truck, and she felt that the car really was for him. You know what I mean? It's, it would be like Cinnamon's dad when he gave me a, some sort of, what did he give me for my birthday? But it was something he wanted, you know, not me. Typical male. You know, and, you know, look, I got you this neat thing, uh-huh. Yeah, you did, right? Wonderful. Okay. So, uh, anyway, it was kind of, I got to dry this and keep going. Takes a little thought to do these reflections. So I may not say too much why I'm doing them. So I really have to, you know, kind of concentrate on on what these are. where you need little brushes. There we go. One of the drawbacks to, you know, people have said, well, did you ever do any painting while you were when you were doing your car salesman bit, right? And I would have to say no, I didn't. And the reason being is that um, that just wasn't conducive. To, it wasn't conducive to being an artist. I know that sounds funny, but it just wasn't. He, you know, you're just, we would work these. It's very hard to get at, in, back into a creative mode once you've been into some other mode. If you guys have had trouble with that, if you're, if you're doing art and then you have to suddenly balance your checkbook, there's a simple way to get back into the other side of your brain. But there are really, um, you know, we talk about two sides of the brain. We're not kidding. There just really are, you know, the right and left side of your brain and how it functions. And um, you... It's um, when so when I'd come home, we we would work it. Uh, there was no schedule. Um, there was absolutely no schedule as far as as how I was working. There was just um, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to buy a car and 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 um, nobody went home till they till it was sold. You know, if so, if the Everybody else in the dealership went home, but if you had a car in, in the F&I, uh, y you weren't going anywhere, okay? And um, that's just the way it was. You just stayed there because you had to, once, once it got through, uh, through F&I, you had to deliver the car. Through what? F&I, which is the finance department. Oh, finance and financing, sure. called F&I. Once you got through F&I, you had to, to deliver the car. And uh, yeah, so that you know, you laugh about that, but that was a um, that was a big thing, right? You just absolutely had to be able to. You had they they wanted you out there, you know, delivering that car, even if it's at ten o'clock at night in the dark, and they put the lights on, and. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but um, nobody uh, nobody went home. Where's my T-square? 
It's down here. So, I mean, the hours were crazy, and that's the reason a lot of people couldn't be there, because you, you for instance, one of the things that kind of shocked me when Cinnamon and I were in France, and I remember being in the hardware store buying some stuff, and it was getting close to noon, and they closed at noon, and we had about a $150 order, which was a lot of money for all the stuff we were getting for the two months we were going to be there. and. Um, Um, they closed right in the middle of the transaction, right? Well, all my stuff was at the register. They did not ring it out. They just closed it. And you're going, surely not. And I said, oh, yeah, they did, right? They closed it, and that's just the way it was. They, they closed it. And um, closed the store. We had to come back two hours later after lunch to pick it up. And so, and, and, you know, you got to understand from uh, uh, America coming for a car dealership, if somebody was trying to buy something, pretty much in any store, nobody's leaving if they're buying something. You know, I mean, we're like the Ferengi, really, uh, oh, <laughs> of the yeah. world, aren't we, kind of? Absolutely. We're like the deal. Ferengi, you know? You want to buy it, we'll sell it. We don't care what it is. What did you want to buy? We'll find it and help you get it. And, you know, I mean... Uh, I mean, it's very funny, really, when you think about it, yeah? A lot different than other nations. Yeah, they just, you, you know, um, they, they, you know, some people in Europe actually get a two-month vacation. Can you imagine that? You know, in the States, if you get one week, you're, you're, you're considered, really, most of the cruises are so short, okay, with the cruises. And why the reason they're so short is because... Um, uh, the people can't get away. They can get away for a weekend, maybe take a day off or two, but they really can't get away with much, get away from, you know, from everything for, for very long. They just can't. And, um, so anyway, the idea that we've, you know, so it was a, it was a weird kind of a life in that you, you could pay the bills, mostly. I could pay the bills with it. Because I, I wasn't getting any support, and I was having support myself. And um, so I, I could pay the bills. But, um, and I came home with a pretty good paycheck every month. But uh, it was a toll. It, it took a toll on me to be able to do that. Um, it, it's, it, it was hard. And I'm not to, trying to do an oh boo hoo here. But um, this is my favorite part of the whole painting, you guys, this part. Just basically on call, and if somebody didn't show up, you would you would have to come back in. So, might as well be a doctor. Well, you'd make more money for sure, but you know we met. At, you know, so I recently went to this to get my uh, shot in my knees uh, for knee. You know, for my knees. You know, have kind of the nice cushy stuff and my knees has kind of disappeared so I get a kind of a cushiony shot so it's, you know it really works and you don't any kind of pain anymore it's kind of a nice trick but um, we were talking our doctors you know we never have any kind of conversation with him because he's just um, <laughs> he's just there for seconds you know where 
our trip to his, you know, we were kind of joking about it, but our trip to the doctor's office for him is we're just uh, paying his light bill, you know what I mean, kind of thing, right? It's for, you know, because he bills the insurance company and that's just it. But uh, uh, his, um, he was talking about, I don't know how it came out in conversation, you, John? He was talking about um, just not being happy, remember? And it was I guess we were asking about his PA. Yeah, we were talking about his PA and this and, and his work. He doesn't have one right now. He doesn't have one, but he was talking about being unhappy at home. Remember that? Yeah. He was saying he had three kids and and um, and uh, and he felt like you know that they were just kind of a problem, and I felt you know felt, kind of felt sort of sorry for him. So all he does is work. All he does is work. Try to, you know. You know. Well, I remember I had a good friend. Um, still have a good friend. She remain nameless, but back in the you know years ago when Cinnamon was a little kid, her kids and my kids played together. Cinnamon and her her friends and her we, they were friends. Her her daughter. And um, I remembered one time it was like New Year's, and I said so. What are you doing this New Year's? And she says, you know what it's like to be married at a, a, a doctor on New Year's Eve? You sit home alone on, you know, and, and uh, stare at the television and shuffle your credit cards. <laughs> Swear to God, that's what she said. I was, her quotes were so wonderful. She was just so funny. You know, you shuffle your credit cards. That's what you do. Okay? And, uh, I just got, I, she just makes me laugh because she had such an expressive way of, of saying what stuff was like, right, for her. Stating the obvious. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, she came in one time to buy a car for me. And this is an important thing, too, is that um, um, that one of the things you want to do with your friends is that you don't, we're friends, you know, we're still friends, but you don't want to give your friends any kind of break on the deal. You don't want to sacrifice your commission for them or nothing. And you're going, but Ginger, they're your friends. I thought you're best friends, so why wouldn't you try to get them a deal? Well, <laughs> now, this uh, nobody gets shocked here, okay? Because this is absolutely the truth. Um, when you give a deal to your friends, Okay. Um, when when the, when you offer when you try to get them a deal, what happens is, is that that friend of yours, because you work at the dealer, any problem they have, they have your home number. Any problem <laughs> they have with that car, it's your fault. You sold it to them, and they want you to do something about it. Not that she did that, but that's what you know. That's what happens, and so. If um, if you're looking at um, if you if 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 you've if you have made a nice commission on the purchase, they're your friends. You're going to help them out anyway, but you're not going to resent it. Does that make sense? Absolutely. You're not going to resent it because, after all, they um, they bought the car from you and you appreciate that, and um, and you know that you're going to be their go-to person, okay? And everybody wants a go-to person at a car dealership, you know, when um, things aren't going well, you want a go-to person. If you get a go-to person, um, that's lovely, yeah? you got to have a go-to person. You want a go-to person, but still, um, your go-to person um, takes up a lot of your time, okay? I mean, and it's true. Like for instance, John finds this true with uh, with with he has a good friend that um, calls him up all the time with his computer problems, right? All the time. All the time, right? Never ever asks how John's doing or anything like that. 
just he's got computer problems and somehow he has decided that it's John's go mission in life is to solve these for him. Okay? And the difference is that John never sold him a computer or did any work for him. He just feels kind of entitled. And that's, um, we ran into that when Cinnamon's, when Cinnamon's dad was, uh, we lived in Aspen and he loved fixing things. And Cinnamon's dad was one of these people that could fix anything, really. I mean, and he liked, and he'd tinker on things. So we had people from our church um, coming to the house from about 8, eight or 8.39 in the morning to about 11 o'clock at night with stuff they wanted fixed. Could he fix this? Because in Aspen, when we lived there, there was nowhere to get anything fixed. In all fairness, there just wasn't. You just had to send it off to Denver. There just really wasn't anywhere you could get stuff fixed. So we, we there was, that was a problem, yeah? So, um, Anyhow, uh, we just had a lot of people coming by for all kinds of stuff that they wanted fixed, and he was happy to do it, but, you know, he's, he was a project guy himself. We had a basement that did in our condo with just nothing but, you know, paintings and stuff that I was working on, all his projects and stuff, okay? And... Um, so, he, you know, he was saying, you know, since I don't mind helping people, and he just he did like it. He, he really enjoyed the fixing stuff, right? But um, the problem he had with it was that um, he just, it was just constant after a while. I mean, it was just amazing. Uh, the word got out, and even people we didn't know would come by, and of course he wouldn't, he wouldn't take any money for it. He wouldn't charge anybody, because he had this thing about if you took money for something, um, which would have been a good solution too, just charge people, they would have paid, right? But he didn't want to charge anybody because he, he had bad things about taking money ruined the project. Now, for me, that just makes it better. But for, for him, um, it just uh, ruins the project. That's how he, how he felt about it. Just absolutely ruined it. So, uh, so he was doing all this work for free. I mean, if, they had to, if there was a part or something, somebody would pay for that. We didn't, you know that kind of stuff, but mostly he'd machine the part or he'd make it or figure out some other a brilliant way to, um, to do this, okay? So I said, well, that's simple. What I want you to do is to just next time anybody comes over asking, just say, look, we have a new policy that we're, we're trying out. I'm happy to fix anything for you. What I'd like you to do, whatever you think this might cost, um, I, don't want to, I don't want to take any money from anybody, whatever you think this might cost, just put it in the collection box for the congregation, the church. Let me tell you, that nipped all those people, just nipped it in the bud because, you know, <laughs> they might be willing to, to cheat. I'm not saying they cheated us, but they might be willing to, you know, take advantage. Nobody wants to take advantage of God, right? If you're a believer, you're not taking advantage of God, right? That's true. That was the... Um, you're not, you're not going to mess with the big guy. Yeah, all right. So um, that, that was really fun. Because <laughs> we still had projects that people wanted done. They genuinely wanted it fixed, and they didn't mind putting money in the collection box. You know, they didn't mind doing that. And they, in fact, they were, they were happy to do it. And that just solved a lot of dilemmas.
anyway, that was that was the uh, let's get back to the car stuff. As we had more talk, more things to talk about in the car car thing than that. Um, I had a neighbor in uh, California and nice lady, and she had bought a new car. I think she had bought a new Honda, and not for me, but she already had it before I started selling them. And she, she took it back because it made, she said it made her knees hurt. And I thought, man, what, what a deal. Um, I, I really just thought, you know, I don't know if they were whining or just, you know, what a spoiled person. And I'm selling these cars. I drive them every day, and they don't make my knees hurt, okay? So this, this is important stuff, you guys. So just pay attention to this because this is one of the things you might want to consider when you're buying a car. So she was saying that, that they made her knees hurt, okay? So, I, and again, I just didn't believe her, okay? I just thought she was, Many you know, just whining and spoiled and... You know, I don't know what I thought, but not nice. I had not, I did not have nice thoughts about her, which is a shame because a lovely person. But I didn't. I very judgmental. I thought I sell cars and they don't hurt my knees. And what is your problem, right? So they had something in those days. They may still do it, but in those days, sometimes maybe there's a particular car you want, and it shows in the brochure that it comes in white with red seats. And, and that's you know what? You what? That's what you want. And their your dealership, you want to buy from this dealership because you like them. You do. You like the people. But um, uh, you're, um, they don't have your car. So rather than have you leave the dealership and go to some other dealership to buy the car, which might be you know, further away, what they'll do is they'll offer to go get you the car and bring it. And what they mean by that is they don't truck it in. Some salesman has to get in his car and, um, back. and with another salesman and drive up there and get the car. That's how that works, yeah? And so anyhow, I had to go really honestly, I don't know, I think it was like a three hour drive to get somewhere in the state where this car was that somebody wanted that we didn't have, okay? And um, so I'm, 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 oh, I know what it was. I drove one of our cars, we traded. I drove one of our Hondas up and that Honda back. That's how that happened, okay? Now, now it takes me a while to remember how these stories work, but that's how it happened, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm driving about two and a half hours after driving up there. Um, my knee starts to really hurt. My knees are hurting. Now I'm 33 years old. I'm in very good shape. Um, not overweight. Uh, I've never had knee problems in my life. Um, so I, so I got older and suddenly my knees are killing me. And it was just an interesting, uh, anomaly there because I, and then on the way back, I could barely make it back with the other car because the way the seats were in that car, they did they hit my knees at the wrong place. They call us there's a word for this, it's called agronomics. Ergonomics. E ergonomics. Whatever. Called that. And <laughs> when you're um, when you test drive a car and like I was doing, test driving, get it out, you don't get you'll you will not necessarily find that to be true that you know the car may be a problem but you're not going to notice it because uh, uh, you, you're just not in the car long enough so if there's any way possible to go rent the same car same model of car go down to the rental thing try to rent the car you want to buy and and spend you know go somewhere spend a couple hours in it two or three Drive it somewhere, the rental car, and try to think what you could do um, where you could, you know, if you could do that um, and test it to see if, it, you know, suddenly it, you know, what didn't work before kind of works now, right? So does that make sense? 
So that was one of the um, that was one of the little life lessons that we I learned there. You know, selling cars was this idea that they could um, um, that, that that just just test driving it was not around the block was not enough. And and honestly, uh, new cars have new shocks, and. And they're going to feel better than the car you've got. Just you know, they they just have to because they've got new shocks. So the best, they always feel the best when they're new, right? Um, they just do, yeah. So, let's see where did I put that T square? Put it somewhere here. Oh, here. So yeah, they absolutely. Absolutely do. So those are just some, you know, little tips that, that I would tell you about buying a car um, that you might not, that you might know. Um, one lady wanted to return a car that I sold because it didn't fit her coffee cup holder. It didn't what? Her coffee, her coffee, her coffee mug didn't fit in the holder. She didn't like the holder. She wanted to take it back. Well, that, that's a legitimate reason right there. Well, I mean, you know, you, we can all laugh about it, but on the other hand... It's a legitimate reason. I mean, if, if you're commuting every day and where your coffee cup really matters and where it is, right? Absolutely. I'm not kidding. Then it, sure, that, that, that could make it, you know, doesn't, don't you think? It makes or break it. It could, right? So, um... Absolutely. If you, you know, those are the kinds of things that you, you know, that you, you know, that that you might really care about. Yeah. But it's the number one thing she should have checked when she first got well, in the car. What, what, whatever your thing is, and I can remember one of my one of Cinnamon's friends heard I when I was first selling cars at the Mitsubishi store, and one of Cinnamon's friends came in because she said. Uh, so, uh, her, the mom, one of her friends, came in, and um, to, you know, to, to shop, and um, so, and she, she told me she wanted a, a certain kind of car, and I said, well, and I said I sat down with her and took a little moment because, again, I knew the friend rule, but also I wanted to take some and make sure that she had the car she wanted. So I asked her, um, what is it about the car that you have? And this is something you want to ask yourself. What is it, what do you like about the car you have now? Okay. And what kind of things do you want to do in the future uh, with your car? Okay. I have to dry all this and then I can keep adding layers, all right? It's coming along though, you guys, don't you think? It's coming along beautifully. All right, let's dry this and we'll talk more about car questions. So, you know, I said, so what is it you like about your car now? And what what kind of feature, you know, and what do you plan to do with the car? And what do you envision? Are you going to go camping? You have more time now. What are you going to do? Well, it turned out the car she needed was totally different than the car she came in to buy. Okay? Totally different. And... That stuff, you know, makes a difference. So before you ask yourself, it doesn't, 
you know, before you trade cars or change cars, your life, life, your life changes every few years. And uh, the car you think you may want may not ask. So just take a moment and ask yourself the question, um, what do I want out of a car now that um, I didn't realize I wanted? Yeah? Make sense? So anyway, that well, was the... sense to me. So she, I remember getting a letter from her. She wrote, she called me up and she said, you can't believe it. That made such a difference to me. Thank you so much for that. Because I didn't realize that um, this new car is just absolutely, I would have bought the wrong car. And she said, thank you so much for that. And I mean, those, that's kind of gratifying too when you, when you help somebody out like that and they appreciate what you've done. But you, that's those questions anybody could really ask themselves when they're talking about buying anything. You know, like um, John and I recently had to buy a new dishwasher. And John realized that what, that what he wanted in a dishwasher was, was just this, the two of us. And sometimes he wants to be able to just um, maybe just wash the dishes in a, um, a short mm -hmm. amount of time. He doesn't, maybe just something to hear that there were some dishwashers out there that you could, you know, they just do an hour. Do a mini load. And just do a big load in an hour and it gets it clean and you know that's kind of what he was interested in and um, so I mean we, we went ahead and googled that right and it turned out that uh, they made a lot of new dishwashers do that but then we were able to take it even further and find one that 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 fit our lifestyle but it wouldn't have fit, say, when Cinnamon and John were living here with all the kids, it wouldn't have fit them. See what I mean? And the same thing with your car. It just depends on, uh, you know, what are you going to do with it? I guess what's that's, the goal? that's the goal. What's, what's the goal here? What's the end game, as they say? Yeah, what's the end game? Yeah. And. We'll let that dry and we'll work on something else. So what do we want here? Um, time to plant some grass. I think that's what we're going to do. Maybe one of these dagger brushes. Let's, let's plant some grass. What do you guys think? Shall we? So anyway, uh, I, I think I had mentioned before that I was mad at the Ford, you know, working at the Ford company after they kind of, I felt like they had um, deliberately um, well, I just didn't, you know, that, that, you know, particularly with that spoonie and all that stuff and I just didn't like it. So, um, you moved on. I, you know, moved on, right? And um, so, I like this little dagger brush for this, by the way. Uh, I went and I got a job at the Honda dealership. And they had the same kind of meetings as everybody else. You know, they, you know, you had to show up at the meetings and they did their, you know, the, you know, meeting thing. But not once did they talk about disrespecting the customer. Never. It was like it was just a whole do, and it was a whole new, or the salespeople. There were some other women that worked there. I wasn't the only one. There was a gal in her 50s that was doing pretty well, um, and, you know, as far as it was selling cars. And they were just, they were really nice. They were just nicer people. So they didn't have all the games that, that I like so much, you know, me and games, right? They didn't have all the games that the Ford people had. But um, what they had was um, they just had, there was a sense of camaraderie. And they had two, two offices. Uh, they, had a, they had a main dealership, and then they had like a sub thing across the street. And I worked in this little sub thing. And I got to be very good friends with everybody. I mean, they still did the whole thing about the, 
you know, there's always more money and you have to, you know, whatever people want for their trade, we don't care. And the used car people, that seems to be a different group. They never changed. <laughs> they just didn't, you know. They, they didn't change at all, but the... Uh, um, but the, the atmosphere was nicer, and I remember selling a car to um, the son of Jonas Salk from the Salk Institute up there in uh, uh, La Jolla, and his, uh, you know, they were the people that invented the polio vaccine. And it's, it seemed like we had, a, 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 I don't know, probably a, a different type of customer for the most part. I still, the used car department still gave me fits. You know, the used car people, even though I was no longer able to have access to their their lot anymore, you still had to go over there to get it. Um, so had to deal with them. Yeah, to, to go to deal with them. And you guys know that I talk fast, right? <laughs> and I do. And for some reason, I irritated the poo out of this one one manager, really, honestly. He just, I was doing well, didn't matter. I irritated the poo out of him. And he just, uh, well, I don't know. There's some stuff that went on. He, he, you know, I really made him mad. So we had this guy come in with this truck that was um, like an old van, and it had like Cupid dolls and stuff glowed, glued all over it. It was a mess, right? And for a joke, he let me take it over to the guy. He said, he wants to trade this in on something. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we had kind of going back and forth on this. But anyway, that was sort of funny, right? He wants to trade this in. What do you think, boss? He wants to trade this in. Uh, anyway, uh, that was, uh, come on, that was fun. But, you know, it just got home late hours and all that stuff. And then eventually, um, uh, George and I decided to move to Texas and get into um, rental properties. And we sold our, I sold my house in California. I had four acres of, you know, property. And we, uh, I, and we moved to, we moved to Texas. Uh, but what, what, I have one thing about it, though. I never worry too much about um, people like Hart, you know I mean? The, 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 when I go to buy a car, and John will tell you that, one of the things I tell him is, that, you know, I used to sell cars. I have a ring and everything. And a lot of stuff just doesn't happen because of that. You know? Even though it was years ago, things haven't changed that much. In fact, one kind of funny thing that happened was I had a, one of Cinnamon's good friends, her husband had a used car dealership and he was listening to my car stories, and he said, would you come in and talk to, I want you to come in and talk to our salespeople. Okay? About how to do it. Because one thing, when you're, you, you know, what, what, what people, when they first, first looking for customers, the first person they ask is their friends. I, I just became a car salesman. Would you like to come in and buy a car from me? That's the first thing people do. And that's a dumb thing. You don't want to do that, right? Um, you definitely, you'd, if you're going to involve your friends and stuff, what, how you involve them is you say, by the way, I've just started uh, selling cars. And maybe you know somebody that might want it. Take my car. And if you know anybody that's looking for a car, send them my way. Well, now you've expanded your reach, so to speak, right? You, you suddenly have not just you looking for a thing. It's like, for instance, like you ever have a friend that's single and everybody's trying to 
look for even unasked. They're trying to match them. You know, look, I know a single trying guy. You love him, right? Yeah, they, absolutely. They do that, right? Well, you can get that effect going with them. Um, with the cars too. <laughs> Seriously, you can. I mean, I know it's just, it's extraordinary. You can get them to do that for you too with the, you know, selling cars. You can do that. And um, um, the. the, the you you wish you just wouldn't think so, would you? But you can. So let's see. Let's put in our little fire fire thing here. I'm having fun with this little dagger brush. So, so I had all my friends sending me people too. Of course, nothing beats somebody like George who just went ahead and made friends with, you know, the the back office. That was, um, which was a good thing, because I remember one time I accidentally washed his paycheck, and he knew the ladies well enough, and they were very forgetful. He said he did it, because we never let anybody know, knew that, know that he was living there. We just never, ever told him, because we didn't. Uh, and George and I barely spoke when we were at the dealership, when we were working, except to tell me that, that I had made people mad. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, gosh, that's sure too bad, John. I mean, George just. Oh, so sorry. Anyway, uh, I gotta dry that to finish my little thing here. Back when I was working at, at the Mitsubishi store in Carlsbad, California, I think I remember I told you, even though my boss was like my age, or not much older, right? Like we were on our 30s, right? He, he, he kind of had like gray hair, he had premature gray hair, and he just seemed like an old man, you know? He wasn't, but he acted and sure seemed like an old man, okay? So, um, he and I had to go down to somewhere. I can't remember why we were riding together, but we, I ended up going somewhere with him um, to, to some car conference or somewhere where, anyway, I had to go somewhere with him, and we were in the car for quite a while. And it turned out that his wife, that he was married, and his wife was worked, worked for, she was a big executive in Mitsubishi, all right? And somehow, people have a tendency to just, they don't know what happened, but I find out stuff. They just tell me things, right? And suddenly I was getting his story about his wife and the marriage and all that stuff, right? And, and I, I remember asking him, and I said, well, here's my observation about you, you guys, because I think I'd met her once. I said, Oh, I know. This came up as he said that in their marriage, right, that they split all the expenses down the middle. They, that they pay each pay half of the the car house payment. And the, um, you know, everything was fifty fifty. And it's a, it's a wonder I didn't get fired for saying this, but I remember saying to him, "Okay, so let me get this straight, you." You, um, you guys, you guys share everything 50-50, and um, you're never home. I probably see you more than she does, and you know we don't even like each other. I mean, I'm just work for you, and I see you, right? So basically, you're you're never home. And I said, I'm real puzzled. What, what's she getting out of this from you, right? You're never home. You pay everything. What, what, what she, you know, what, what's she getting? And he looked so startled at me. I said, well, I just 
don't know, but I mean, it just, it's a different way to run a marriage. Now, here I am getting divorced, so I mean, I'm really not a person that should be, because at that point I'm ready to, you know, file for divorce with, for, with, uh, with Colby. But, um, but a lot of that had to do with the fact that um, uh, when we found ourselves, when Colby and I found ourselves without funds, he said he would rather sit in a tent on a hill than get a job. And I felt we just weren't on the same page when it came to, it's all very well and good to not work when you don't have to, but at some point you have to work, you go to work, right? You don't just not go to work, right? So anyhow, that was... Um, so, so he looked absolutely shocked when I told him that. Then the, oh, I'll say another weird thing that happened at that dealership that really was interesting was when I was uh, um, to get in the fleet department, we had the fleet department, I was constantly writing letters and sending them out to businesses to, um, um, you know, that was the thing, send, sending out, you know, letters to people because... Um, because um, that was before took, email. Yeah, had the, just before email, right? And we had something called a crisscross directory where you, if you had the phone number, you could find the address and all that weird stuff, and you know that kind of stuff. So, um, uh, directory. Let's see. Wait, I'm thinking about three things at the same time, you guys. Where am I, John? What was I talking about? Crisscrossing. crisscrossing, finding addresses to mail. Yeah, so uh, Cinnamon was off visiting my mom up in Seattle at the time, and I wrote her a letter, and I used one of the stamps that they had given. You know, I had some stamps that you know, mail stuff, and I took it. I took it to the office, and uh, you know, it was very cheap stamps were very cheap back then. Not like they are today. They were pretty cheap. And absolutely got rung through the ringer for using their stamps for a personal, yeah. for a personal letter. I don't know. I thought, you know, you know, I didn't do it all the time. And just, but boy, you can know the girls in the office rather be out. <laughs> you, you, yeah? You, you think that was crummy? I mean, we're, we're not talking about, you know, Overseas, or something. we're not talking about a lot of stuff, you know, just not a lot. <laughs> wow, I, people are, you know, what is that expression? That's cold, right? <laughs> Can't do that. That's really, that's really cold, right? So anyway, you're getting into the profits. Yeah, the whole thing, and he, he called me into this office to tell me this stuff too. It's just, just he always, it's like it was like going to the principal, going to this man's office. So. It was great fun when, because I did pretty well with that dealership. I sold a lot of cars for them, and it was great fun to just quit. Oh, I remember. They um, they fired one guy, because uh, the oh the owner of that dealership wasn't him. There was a, he was the guy he owned the he owned the to Toyota dealership next door, and then he owned the Mitsubishi dealership, and the Toyota salesman seemed to get preference. They got to go to. They were always had these group activities, so like they'd take you to a baseball game after work, something like that, right? And um, the um, let's see, where are we going with that? Gosh, I just I, I start thinking about what color I want, and then I lose all train of thought about what I'm telling you about the um, oh the owner, the dealership and stuff, right? So um, they had a guy. And that um, was their top salesman. And they fired him because they wanted to scare the others, what? other salespeople. Being a top salesman didn't count for diddly squat. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but I promise you it was absolutely true. Um, yeah, huh? No, didn't seem to matter, right? And the um, things that the things that businesses do to yeah, drive a huh? point home is they're just you know to try and uh, you could back in those days you could you could 
if you like for instance if you needed a car you could check one out from the dealership they let you have it but you had to bring it back in better shape than you took it and I could see people getting fired if they didn't do that right because that makes total sense to me doesn't it make sense to you if they took it out and they didn't bring it back nicely um, you know you you got you had to make darn sure that it came back in the same condition but in those days if you were a, one of the perks of being a salesperson is that they'd give you a car to drive for dealers if you were a good salesman you could have a car to drive it and I can't remember if I did or not for a while George did for a while just um, it was just one of your perks but they don't do that anymore but they did back then they'd give you a car so um, Anyway, they, they, you, you were always in danger of getting fired. That just for no, there's no particular reason. They just on on a, on a whim, you could be gone. And they made it very clear that they, that the salespeople had absolutely no value to them. Which of course is nonsense because that we did have value, but um, that was just the atmosphere that they wanted to project. Oh, thank you. Okay, he's going to wind this up. Okay. And cool. then we'll cut that off up here. Okay. So you can get the top. You should be able All to right. that up and so, uh, trace that in there. Anyway, that was just, you know, those are the kind of funny things. So when you're working for a company where you, you're done to particularly appreciated, and even the best people can be let go in a heartbeat, and that's, they just work more behind you, right? Um, it was a, it was an interesting, um, and, uh, you know, just, you know, maybe that's true of a lot of places, but, you know, for me, it was an interesting experience. Thanks, John. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit. i got to put more stuff in here, but this is where the brush gets wet. You start putting in these reflections like this. Um, there's a bumper on this car. There's a kind of a little bumper that comes around. I had a, I couldn't do it until. Maybe I'll just. Maybe I'll do it in black and then. Then try to do it. I'm going to, have to turn this like this. I need to have this little bumper. It comes. Comes around the car like this. Is it true today that you can't bargain as much with new cars like you could in the olden days? No, you can still bargain. You've got to do it at the last day of the month when they absolutely need to have them out. Now, it was a time after COVID when there was no bargaining because... Um, there was no cars. There were no cars. But that is, you know, that's... It's still, depending upon the car, like if you want one of our cars, you can't get them. Yeah, you can't. It depends on the car. Like... Back when when I was a kid, um, well, let's see. Let me just let me just tape this in here like that. Back when I was a youngster. Well, that's when I was a kid. Yeah, I was a kid. And people in, like, um, you could you could um, if they didn't have your car, you could either order it directly from F F Detroit and go pick it up. Okay. You could do that. Or. Um, I don't know how I don't know how that would work today. I know Toyota. But you can't. You, you, can't you, do yeah, that. you could. You, and and you could buy cars in other states easily. Yeah, can't. Like can't we do we that. tried to do that with um, with um, our car, and nobody would. And uh, the other states didn't want to do it because um, it and this service. makes total sense if you think about it. They didn't want to do it because um, let's see. I guess I can't have that taped. Um, well, the whole idea is to build a relationship because the yeah, service they, they business want the and service the department, they want all that, and they, you know. So if you come in from out of state and want to buy something, that's um, 
you know, then you're gone and you take your business and so your your Ford dealer gets it or your Toyota dealer gets it. Somebody else gets the business and uh, they don't. So um, if they have a lot of cars and they need to just get so many out, then yeah, they'll do it. And the trick is this can't move anymore. And I push so hard for this. <clears throat> But uh, now, now you can't. Um, it's coming back. And we had a lot of people lie to us. They'd say, oh yeah, we have the car, no problem. Yeah. And then they lied. Because one of the things that they would do, even then we were told to lie about stuff like that. Oh yeah, we have the car. Because um, they figure they can flip you onto something else that they can get. get get you in the dealership, they can flip you. So just because they said, yes, we have the car you want, means nothing. Oh, I had him say, okay, give me a picture of it. Yeah, that's what John said. Give me a picture of it, you give said. Give me a picture of it. Nobody had the car. Nobody had it. Yeah. I really don't like the lighting. Well, I think that's it. Okay. Is that what you were thinking? Mm -hmm. Or were you thinking up higher? I wanted a little bit higher. Yeah, okay, so can we get this off? Sure we can. No? A little water? Yeah. Okay, so now we got to dry that. Yeah. And um this up you had I had it here where, where that put it too low I gotta just bring it up like this yeah, it should be lined up the lines yeah it's about right there yeah okay I guess I should have been over there doing that part let's see that's yeah okay you better now sorry it's all right you know, this uh, this trial and error. People just think you just whip these things out in an hour, and you don't. Hello. Okay, so I'm good here, right? off center but well not really there's just a shadow there yeah no, okay. I, can go with that. I think we can go with that yeah you're talking right. early 1900s they, they didn't have tape measures back then did they no we're gonna go with that we'll go with that we will go with that 
see, where was that picture? All right. This is where we need the pot white pasta. That one's just not putting up enough ink. Or paint, as the case may be, Missy. What's that? You said ink, it's paint. Yeah, not enough. Never try to paint this in with a brush. And it's an old sign, so if it looks a little faded, that's fine. Stars yeah. are hard to do, I've always thought. Get a perfect star. I'm a big proponent of tracing them on to get them right. This is sort of like doing a Starbucks. You can do it for your own personal use, and we're giving this to a friend, but I wouldn't put a, an actual label of a, this was one of their original Texaco labels. They're kind of close to that on their symbols. But I wouldn't do that if I were, you know, this is. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry that. Actually, I think that is in the right place because we have a shadow here. I might bring this line up a little bit. Shake up a red pen and and go for it, right? Thank you, John, for finding that. We talked about this this morning. I gotta put my glasses on so I can really see this. Beth, let me just turn this upside down, get it closer to me. I'm trying to reach above my head to paint this in is crazy. This will probably need two coats, two little sections of paint. If you're going to sell something, if, if you, the, the same amount of work to sell a jet plane as is a car, consider selling something that costs a little more, where the commissions are bigger. I don't know. For me, it was all I could do to learn about cars, enough where I could, you know, talk about them. So I had no interest, but I had a friend that sold, you know, those giant commercial trucks. And uh, he, he, he did really well uh, commission-wise because there's a couple hundred thousand dollar vehicle or a hundred thousand or whatever it is. So he did very well at that standpoint.
this is where you really have to think about what you're doing. Artisto pens. Okay, let's Try that. Okay, so now we have it, um, now we have it, uh, Yeah, we're going to fade that out. But it's got, I just need it to set, make sure it's really dry before I do anything more to that. But, but do something with it. It's not yeah, going to stay like that. Yeah, it looks like, like a Texaco that. place now. Huh? Now it looks like a Texaco place. It does, doesn't it? Isn't yeah. it funny how little things like that? And... Here's the white part of the tape.
better. Now what we need to do is age it. Think white. There we go. Just age this a little bit. been up there a while. We were just looking at the IHOP down the street, how much their sign had faded. It was, remember that, John? That's, oh, that's absolutely. Yeah, that's looking better. Got your little age on it. Yeah, see, so now it's, it's there, but it's not. And then it's just right here. We've yeah, added like that. The roof line up there yet. What's that? Yeah, well, I'll still work on that. Let's say I'm coming straight down here like this. And maybe I'm going to suggest that there's There's a reflection from that sign. Let's try oh, that. That's looking good. Let's try that. It's all small stuff, but you know, it makes a difference, right? So, John, um, if anybody's looking at this and wanting to know, you know, what's what am I painting? It's not a tutorial. No, it's not a tutorial. And I think that, well, how long have I been working on this right now? Well, this is your third day. You've got almost two hours into this one. You had three yesterday and two the first one. So you got uh, two, four, seven. This is probably a seven, eight hour tutorial if you actually did it. It would be a little bit longer because you have to explain everything. Yeah, It'll probably be a nine-hour tutorial. Yeah, nobody wants to sit through a nine-hour video. No, they don't. Well, as much as they say, "Oh, I want it, I want it," no, you don't. No, you don't. They don't. Want, and even when they do, they don't sit through them. And they don't sit through it because we've done them. We've done some really long ones, and we. Can I can tell, tell from looking at the paintings that they yeah, never watched the whole you. thing. Yeah, or, we, I would. The, the, we, we know that you're not watching the whole thing. We only give you a little pop quiz. Ja Janity we, watches them. Who does? Janity watches them in yeah. India. She, she watches them. She was on them. earlier. She watches them. I know for sure she does, but, you know. And PJ uh, probably does. Uh, who? PJ. 
PJ, yeah, there's a few, but the, but a few the majority of people. Well, some that say, oh, yeah, I watched everything. We go, mm. no, because your painting says you didn't. Because <laughs> we change some things at the end that we often do. Because Ginger and I will sit there and talk about it and go, no, nah, they didn't quite work out. Well, one of the reasons we leave them that way, we don't edit them out, is because it, if I make a mistake, I want you to see. How to fix it. You know, how to fix it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I want you to, you know, see that, right? And, um, I think that's, you know, that's kind of important. So these are, what we're doing, these uh, little story time, acrylic painting story times, or paintings that we have um, basically commissioned ourselves to do for people that signed up for a yearly membership in the year of 2023, because these are, it's coming to an end at the end of December. There'll be no more of these. You sign up for a year, you get a painting, depending upon the membership level, red or purple, and the length of time, one, two, or three years, dictates the size of the painting you will receive. So. Yeah. And like I said, that ends this year, 2023, December 31st at 11.59 p.m. Central Time. Uh, we'll still do these uh, these shows because I have oh, a yeah, lot of paintings to do. We'll still, still keep doing 50. the shows. Yeah, we still got about I, fifty paintings. Because I have to a go. lot of paintings to to get through. Yeah, we got we got plenty of material, plenty of material. So we're still yeah still doing those, but um, but the special will be off, never to be repeated again. I think we were a little crazy to do it this time. Hey, but we're crazy people. So if you have any questions, usually uh, contact us on paintingwithginger.com. And we'll you know, you still chance there's still time for you to sign up for an annual membership, either as a red or as a purple as member. As long as 2024. 2024, sign up. And um, you can still take advantage of this, right? Yeah, I like the faded sign, don't you? That. Yeah. And reflection down below. Yeah. Let's see. Probably do some six by eights next time to. We have a lot of six by eights ones. to do, so we'll be doing. We just wanted to get, you know, this was fun. I wanted to paint this. She and wanted I thought, to paint this one. We designed it up, and she goes, Oh, I got to paint that next. So, so we figured that uh, you guys would have, you might enjoy seeing the, uh, this painted. You know, the, one of our favorites that we did is the, um, uh, the gypsy wagon, which we did on YouTube also. Yeah, that was another good one. Classics, I tell you, classics.
we should put a frog in here somewhere, you know that? A frog? I'm saying, I'm laughing, but a frog or something, right? With all this um, yeah. swamp stuff, right? Let's get the Posca pen out and work on the. Uh, let's, let's try that so I don't smear anything. Yeah, please. Make me nervous doing that. Pretty close to finished, almost. Just a small little detail on the cars. On the car. I'm not trying to do the car too perfect, but. black pen and what that one here shake these up well this is exactly what I really wanted to paint you know that I wanted to paint something like this and um, just just this old time in Louisiana Bayou gas station. We actually looked up what kind of gas stations were in the south in around 1900. Yep. Texaco is a Texas company. There was Gulf too, but they didn't have as good a label. <laughs> it wasn't recognizable. You know, that Even kind of thing. Texaco. But uh, this is exactly what um, you know, I really wanted to paint, so I got to paint it, which is great, you know, which is great fun. Still got a few little things to do with this. This has to be black inside here. One more thing here. I'm kind of looking around. Where would that be? 
clips. What are you looking for, boss? I, I think I had those stencils somewhere. I had them in this drawer, pretty sure. Oh. They're in, they're in one of these drawers. They're in here somewhere. Here they are. Okay. And what are you gonna do with them? I'm gonna put you a- You don't have to be silly, are you? I'm gonna put a star. Oh, on the gas right, pump? Right there. On the old gas pump. And I put a dot so I know that's where the center is, right? That's pretty clever of you. Put my glasses on so I can see it. You know, the trick is to pick this right up. Look at that. Now you know you what you're getting. You're getting good stuff. Huh? You know, it's classy. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I use these little star stencils. That's a unique piece, my dear, unique. Yeah, no one's got anything, you know, we're never doing another one. We may do a puzzle out of this later. Yeah, we we may do one. a puzzle or something out of it, but it will not be a two painting tutorial. This is the person that's getting this is signed up for th for three years with us to get this six, 12 by 16. Is getting a totally unique painting, and we don't every one of them is unique, and we put our all into them. Yes and yes. And uh, okay. I'm not going to mess with that. So I think we're coming to the conclusion of this exciting one? We are. We think that's, um, I'm just looking at my lights and darks and my reflections to make sure that I have them um, the way I want them. As you should. And uh, uh, I think this is kind of a fun one. I hope everybody's enjoyed the process of, of how this, um, you know, how I got this uh, car, gas station to go. Um, yeah, I just, a little shading on that. Okay. And I think I wanted some flowers over here, which I didn't put yet, but that's about you find the frame for that, John, and let's see, we'll finish this up um, with uh, the reason this painting worked the way it did was because I had absorbent ground, uh, which um, melts the, uh, the paint a lot really well, and so you just melts into the canvas so you don't have that, um, you know, it would be harder. If you didn't have absorbent ground, this would be a t tough technique to do. You know that? You'd be hard pressed. Yeah, just small stuff. It's all small stuff, right? They got to lighten up this sign here. Stuff. Yeah. Once again, acrylic dry darker. Lighten up that sign. And uh, I gotta say that I, uh, I'm just, this was fun. I didn't want to clutter up with too much junk on the outside of the station. Got an old bucket, got the gas station. Are you pleased as punched with it? I am, I'm okay. like, an, I think that, I think that it, um, I think that it's exactly what the doctor I wanted ordered. to do. 
guess we way, way I would put that. And uh, should I give you a pack on it? And they let's put the put our little Texaco sign away. Wow, huh? I could do a few more details, but I think that all in all, I think we really got it, don't you? All in all. You know, I mean, you could have a little bit of like some water maybe running oh, in this you direction. Can, you can spend days on all the fine tunes. Yeah, so I think we're good, right? So we're, gonna, good. we're going to, I'm going to, going to put it in a frame and then John is going to, I'll, I'll let me, I can sign it while it's in the frame, which is always a good thing to do. It's all dry. Yeah, it's all dry. Go ahead. And I'm just going to pick that up and we're going to frame it. So I want to thank everybody that's been uh, watching on uh, our shows, uh, the Storytime shows. We do regular tutorials on Monday nights. Um, but um, if you want to learn to paint like this and you want to learn these kinds of things, we have like a wonderful gas station in our academy, a little old-fashioned gas station. Look at that. Wow. Okay, you guys. Huh? That's nice. You want to adjust the camera or are you happy? No, you're going to live with it like that. Yeah, that, that <laughs> looks pretty good, doesn't it? You can it? see enough of it. You, you really can tell can. it's been framed. Yeah, isn't that just, that's just fabulous. It's the cat's meow. Or somebody's meow. It's really, that's really fabulous. I think going to like it. I, I love it. And I think that, um, again, this is just a, such a unique painting. Um, let's see. I'm going to take my pens there. All right, let's put those down here. And I will sign it right. Right in the puddle? Right here, baby. Yes. <laughs> you noticed that tone in my voice right off the bat, didn't you? Yeah, well, that. Can't ruin a perfectly good puddle. Okay. When that dries, I'll put the red slash through it. And uh, uh, happy New Year, you guys. We'll be, we'll, be, we'll be doing a show on New Year's, I think. Didn't we think we would, John? Yeah, we have the perfect and, subject. And uh, if anybody's asking about cinnamon, she's sicker than a dog. I talked to her this morning, and she had a rough night. She wasn't sleeping well, and um, stomach hurt, and uh, all that really, stuff. really achy, fluey things. And she said to tell anybody that you know that she was sending her love to you guys, and uh, those of you that follow cinnamon and me, and um, you know she wanted to make sure that. Uh, well, that one didn't have anything in it. Okay, never mind. All right, well, this is it, you guys. I feel like we have accomplished our uh, mission with this Louisiana uh, scene from the 1920s in the United States. And definitely, well, a, definitely a 1800, you know, you know, right around 1900, definitely Americana painting. It's okay. slashed now. It's done. It's done. Thanks, you guys. Love it. Love you. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. And check out all the other stories that we're telling you on Storytime. And I hope you're entertained by them. Bye. Bye, everyone.